Hello, welcome back to another pen talk. I've done some modern pens recently, so uh, I got back into uh, going through my uh, vintage collection. And um, Waterman 55 uh, just struck me as a great size pen, excellent nib. So I thought I'd give a little review and a little comparison between um, one of the most popular models, the 52, and the 55. So in front of you, you have a black 52, a black 55, which is the one I just restored, which just uh, amazes me with the nibs. You've got a Ripple 52 and a Ripple 55. As you can see, they're very similar in look and design. Um, Waterman didn't go really uh, creative in their pens. They were very functional very consistent. Um, I still think they made the best nibs overall of, of any of the major pen manufacturers and I'd put their vintage nibs up against any uh, current pen manufacturer. Uh, there's a lot of discussion, a lot of focus on flex and vintage and maybe uh, at some point in time I'll bring out my number 12s and my number 14s which really are wet noodles and uh, we'll take a look at those but that's for another day. So these are the two black ones. They have uh, nickel silver trim on them. I'm not really certain if that's the metal, but it certainly acts and looks like it. And one thing to keep in mind with Waterman's is uh, you're always going to find, of course you got to put them in the right way, you're always going to find the model on the uh, bottom of the barrel. So the 55 and the 52 are there. They're just screw-on caps. Almost every Waterman, until they started going weird in the 40s, were screw-on caps. And I think you can see uh, the difference in the nib between the number 2 nib on the 52 and the number 5 nib on the 55. And the second number, or the last number in uh, Waterman's designation of their pens, indicated the nib size. Let's take a little close-up of these uh, two excellent examples of uh, ripples. This is a gold filled trim. It holds up very, very well. These clean up excellently. Um, hopefully the ripple effect is coming through on the video. Same type of box lever. Uh, all of the nibs, or sorry, all of the pens have a Waterman engraving on the barrel. And a lot of times you can tell by the engraving uh, when the pen was made based on the patent dates and everything else. One of the things that's interesting is the 55 is definitely quite worn. As you can see, the 55 is pretty much unreadable on the bottom of the pen where the 52 is quite clear. And also the barrel imprint is also similarly worn away. If we take the caps off, you can see that there is a slight discoloration from where the cap was on and the barrel that was exposed to sunlight. Uh, uh, hard rubber does deteriorate in sunlight. Um, I've cleaned these up with just a mild polish and some wax to get them uh, looking the way they do. So it didn't take a lot of effort. And again, you can see the different size nibs. I really love the close-up ability uh, of this uh, Canon video camera. It's not very expensive, but it certainly does excellent work. So the number two nib is on the left, and I also threw in a number four, and, and one of the reasons is that Waterman's did a series of nibs from two through ten. I do not have any examples bigger than uh, the five. So there's uh, a four, um, a number five, and a second number five. And let's take a look at the actual dimensions and weights, and as you can see, uh, in some instances, the four is, is pretty much the same as that regular five I would call it but the bigger five is certainly a lot heavier. I had to go to another microphone for some of these uh, recording. Uh, my external mic on my camera is not doing well but I wanted to point out the width on these different nibs and how uh, the width on the two fives vary and the bigger five has a much more of a width to it and that's going to impact the way the pen writes the way it responds on the paper and you can see there's a number on each one of these nibs the nib design and the stamping is all a little bit different on each of them as the uh, 
nibs change over time. You're saying, uh, you know, they made these nibs for probably 30 years, I would say, from uh, the early 1910s to the late 1930s. So, uh, again, I apologize about the audio. Uh, I have ordered another mic, so hopefully it will be here for the next video. We're going to take a look at the weights of these vintage pens. Uh, the difference between the 52 and the 55, uh, I assume it's uh, a few grams. Both of these pens are fairly light, as most uh, hard rubber pens are. So the 52 uh, weighs in at about 14.7 grams, so it's a decent weight on the light side. And the uh, 55 is only 18.8, so again, considering it's a larger pen, it's only a slightly different. Let's compare them to the black models, and the black models are slightly lighter, which because they have less metal, there's no metal at the end of uh, the cap, so that would explain the difference in weight between those pens. Now we're going to compare it to some modern pens to see how the 55 stacks up against the Pelican M800, which I think is a comparable pen to the 55 um, in length. Uh, the section's a little bit girthier, but not quite as long as the 55, so you have a little bit more uh, room to move around on the 55 section. But what really uh, makes them different is the nib size. So even though it's a number five nib to the left, uh, the Pelican M800 is definitely a larger nib size. I'd say maybe an eight size nib. Uh, and uh, that's, uh, you know, what makes that a unique pen. Here is a uh, Sailor 1911 standard, uh, which is quite smaller than, than the Waterman 55 and uh, <coughs> Pilot 78G, um, <coughs> Twisby 580, and then we're going to look at the uh, Lamy Safari. Uh, they're all um, you know comparable in certain degrees, but the 55 certainly uh, for a vintage pen is uh, on the large size. I wanted to show uh, a variety of 52s that Waterman made in the uh, 20s and possibly early 30s. You have the black, you have the traditional ripple, and then uh, another one which is not quite a ripple but has a similar kind of wood grain design in the hard rubber. And then a uh, beautiful uh, example of a solid orange pen. All these are fully restored, working order, and all of them have excellent nib. This is interesting to take a look at an old catalog. This is from uh, 1918. It's nice how they show the different styles, clip and no clip. These are all rubber fill, which is something new to Waterman's at this time frame. Also, it's interesting to look at the pricing uh, based on the size of the pen, and also it changes on whether you get a clip and what the clip is made out of, and also what the metal bands that might be on the pen are. I just think this is an interesting ad just to give you an idea of uh, the pens when they were sold back in those time frames and these were not inexpensive. In the catalog, and this is a 1926 catalog, uh, the one from 1918, the uh, nib page didn't come out very well. So this shows you the great variety of nibs from a 2 through a 10. I mean, I'd love to find a Waterman 10, but I think uh, they're probably all sconded in uh, private collections. So as we zoom in here, you can see how they emphasize the different type of tipping material. I think it's interesting, all the different nibs that they made. The number five came in a large variety, and a uh, long nib is probably the more flexible one. Different tipping materials on it. We come down here to the number fours. Scroll across to the number fives. And again, a great variety of nibs were made. And then here's your number sixes, eights, and of course the big boy, number ten. Thought it might be interesting just to peruse real quickly the specialty points. Stenographer, bookkeeper, falcon nib. You heard of falcon quite a bit, very popular even today. Accounting, manifold, very stiff. Ballpoint, I'm not familiar with that one. Music nib, another rare nib and one called a ruling nib. So I thought I'd show you a quick view. The Waterman also made a lot of pencils to go with their pens. Here's a 52 with 
Well, it looks like a matching pencil. I mean, it's almost the same length, obviously a little bit thinner, kind of like a pencil shape. And this is actually a, a Model 54 in a nice mustard, a hard rubber. I really love this pen. Beautiful finish and design, and it has a number four nib in it, as one would expect. This also has a beautiful stub nib on it, which... Uh, really makes for an interesting writing experience when you get all that flex on a line that's that wide. And there's a, a matching pencil and a similar hard rubber. The hard rubber varies a lot from year to year and from pen to pen, so they're never 100% match, but um, I like the fact that I have a set. For the writing example, we're going to use the two uh, black Watermans in the set that we looked at, the 52 and the 55. These uh, have new bladders in them. Um, they've been thoroughly cleaned uh, in the way that I uh, clean the pens. Uh, so we're going to ink them up uh, with a popular Waterman's ink, uh, Serenity Blue. So, uh, yeah, I don't think that ink's going to do a lot of shading, but I just wanted to use the same ink in the pens and also an ink that you know how the flow characteristics and properties are. I uh, uncap it, you uh, dip the pen into the ink. Uh, as you bring the lever up, you should hear it bubble, and if I had the other audio, we would hear it. So you go up once, you drop it down so the bladder now expands and draws up ink, and I also usually at least do this twice. A little bit more bubbles came out. And on the second one, I uh, click the lever back in place, and I leave it set for about 10 seconds just to make certain that the bladder fully expands and draws up uh, ink. If you pull it up a little too quickly, you'll draw up air into the feed, and then that might make for hard starts or, or difficult writing when you put the uh, nib to paper. So it's just one thing to uh, keep in mind when you're using vintage or some of the modern pens that use uh, bladders. As I mentioned in the beginning of the video, I haven't really written with these pens very much, so I wanted to show you the experience of the first time a nib touches paper on a pen, probably for 30, 40, 50 years. It's just been sitting around. So I didn't do anything but uh, ink these pens up, and the first ex experience you get is, is wow, this is incredibly smooth. It just flows, the ink flows out, uh, it glides across the paper, uh, it just is a unique experience. I wish everybody had an opportunity to, to write with some of these vintage pens. And just a little bit of pressure and you can get some very nice line variation. Excellent flow in almost every Waterman feed I've ever used. Uh, it doesn't railroad. It puts down a phenomenal amount of ink. And this is a soft nib and it really feels nice in the hand, at least uh, from my experience what I enjoy it. And as you can see, it's just easy just to squeeze out a little bit of line variation as you write. Wish we could have some more uh, audio, but all the Waterman nibs, at least most of them that I've used, are extremely wet. They lay down a lot of ink, which is uh, one reason that the flexing works very, very well, because it has a great ink flow. Uh, sometimes I've had to wait 30 minutes for a letter to dry on Tomo River paper when I uh, wrote with some vintage flex and with an ink that didn't dry very quickly. So that's one of the downsides to uh, this type of, of pen and nib, but what you can do with it and how it feels in the hand, I think more than makes up for the fact that it's about the wettest pens I've ever written with. Now we're going to take a look at how I clean. I use this uh, rubber syringe. It's from a Radio Shack, which isn't exist anymore for a flux cleaner. So I put the uh, section in there in the end where it would probably screw into the barrel and I flush a few times in ammonia and then flush it clear with water. As long as there's nothing coming out and I see good flow then I feel comfortable with the pen. So these pens I've not taken apart to feed and the nib to do any other cleaning other than with the bladder. So next we're going to take a look at the 55 and, and see how this nib feels on paper. First impressions is actually is smoother than the 55 and then the 52. So I think a lot of that has to do with the bigger nib. It has a little bit more tipping material on it. Uh, it's a little bit of a wetter line. The other one is more towards the fine. This one's more towards the medium. But you can still just flex it without any effort whatsoever. So both of these nibs 
flex equally easily. And it's an extreme pleasure to write with. You know, this is the one that really turned me on and said I got to do a video on Waterman's. And this one also lays down a ton of ink. So that's uh, kind of the thing you have to be aware of when you uh, write with these pens, uh, that they're going to put down a lot of ink. I think uh, these are interesting not only for my viewers, but for me. Again, I'm at, an and I'm at a weird angle, so I, I drag the feed. It's not what you would normally do. So without any pressure, it lays down a decent line. This lays down a, a wetter and wider line than the 52 nib did. But, you know, one of the other things is just with a slight amount of pressure, and that is incredible. You don't see any railroading. You know, this just works and works and works. And these are workhorse pens. So that's the other thing that's nice about them. I've only had a few issues now and then, but I probably restored maybe 50 Watermans and a couple of them I'm still trying to sort out some feed and pressure things. And sometimes they'll do a little bit of leaking, but hey, for this type of writing experience, uh, it's, it's worth it. So hopefully you've enjoyed this view of a nice vintage pen and maybe you've got a little better understanding of the different styles of Waterman pens. So, uh, thank you all for watching. Hopefully you found this enjoyable. I certainly did enjoy making it. Uh, hey, you never know. There may be some vintage in your future if you don't have some now. And uh, hopefully you enjoy them as much as I do. So, many writing experiences. May all be great and wonderful. And have a wonderful day. <laughs>